Good morning, class. Um, my name is Goran. This is Jared, Craig, Kyle, and Andy. And uh, we're going to be your instructors for today. Um, our lesson is going to be on teamwork. Um, we're going to be uh, focusing on uh, teamwork and kind of what, uh, what it entails, um, kind of description of it. So uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a refresh on uh, groups and teams and things that we've discussed previously in class, is what makes a group and uh, how a group goes from being a group to a team, and uh, what the characteristics are of a team. Uh, we're going to take that into uh, teamwork and what that looks like, how the uh, flow of communication goes, how uh, roles are assigned, how goals are assigned. Um, we're going to take that into team building. We feel that that's a really huge factor inside a team. How, uh, what makes a group decide to go into a team, how it becomes a team, team building, and uh, what makes a, a good team a better team. Um, then we're going to go into uh, a little bit of examples, things that you guys can kind of relate to. Um, our, our main example is going to be police and fire department. We felt like this was a, a very uh, familiar organization that everybody can relate to. And but we'll also be using um, our lesson plans as, a, uh, as an example, uh, going to sports teams and the professional and business aspect of everything. Um, first thing we're going to do is uh, show you a video. I guess a study guide in front of you. It's not being graded, but uh, it's kind of there for, for your own purpose. Um, most of the uh, most of the content that's going to be on the quiz on, on our group is going to be based off this uh, study guide. So use it. I mean, you're going to see it again. So uh, the video really is going to go into uh, the first one is going to be on a little bit on teamwork. So pay attention to uh, what kind of goals, what kind of roles they assign to each other, what are, like, what are some trust things they go into. And the second video is really going to be uh, like an action scene, an emergency, like you know, a team actually doing something, going for a common goal. So pay attention to what kind of, uh, ta what the task is at hand, what the goal is, what are the roles assigned, how the communication goes. So. And for all of you who don't know, DEA stands for Drug Enforcement Agency. Exactly. So that was very quick, guys. Um, what, what did everybody say? Spike is calling all captains to check out. <laughs> did, did anyone see anything in there that would relate to like a team? How, why something important that they felt would be related just to a team? Well, I, I think like the, the biggest part that we go ahead. Saw a hand. I was, I was just going to say I meant I heard how they mentioned that they have each other's back. They know that. The one guy's with them, he's got them covered. Yeah, they trust in each other. Important part of trust. Big portion of it. Um, thanks. A couple of, yeah, that's actually the biggest portion of that clip is like how um, to communicate. Like if, if trust isn't there, the flow of communication isn't really going to happen. So. Uh, no, second video. Every agent on a raid has a specific role in the line or stack. Agent number one uses a fireman's halligan to pry open heavy gated doors, clearing the way for agent number two and his battery ram. Agents three and four are the first to enter the house, armed with shotguns and assault rifles. Their primary objective Neutralize immediate threats while the rest of the team affects arrest. The raid team strikes fast and hard, and in most cases, its targets don't know what hit them until it's over. What about that one? What do you guys see anything else? Um, each has a specific role. That's a big one. Do you think that too? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think what the common goal was in that um, scene? 
taking down a house, like taking out a, a, a drug guy out or something? I think I think what it showed was that sometimes, not always, but sometimes, um, a group can accomplish something that an individual maybe can't. Um, and that's kind of what brought us to this topic when we were um, when we were developing ideas for this for this project. We thought, you know, of this idea of a group. Um, and we thought to ourselves, you know, what is a group and, and what are its functions? And by doing some research, we found out that a group was basically just a set of individuals who interact with each other on a regular basis. That's basically the three main points. Um, basically, they have a purpose in doing so. Um, you know, we've all been in groups. You've been in a group. I've been in a group. And I think we all, as a team, agreed that Tiger Woods has been in a sort of different <laughs> kind of group. That's true. He's been in a group. <laughs> yeah, he's been in a few groups. We won't go to those ones. Um, but basically, you know, I can sit up here and talk about primary groups and secondary groups and, and in groups and out groups and stuff like that. But the main, the main kind of thing that I want you to remember is that interactions are kind of what make up a group. The interactions between the members are kind of what drive a group forward and kind of the bottom defining line of a, of a group. So we kind of took this idea of a group and found out that a team is kind of that next level, level of a group. Um, they're very similar, but they just have a little bit of differences. For instance, they're very goal-oriented. Teams are very, very goal-oriented. Um, they have a very structured way in going about attaining their goal or achieving their goal. Um, most of the time, it's because they have a leader. They, it, whether it be a boss or, or a coach or like we saw here, maybe a you know chief officer of police or whatever. They have a they have a leader who kind of motivates them to to achieve that goal. Um, also, identity. Identity is, is, is like, for instance, we've all been on sports teams, right? We can all... By, by a show of hands, how many people have been on a sports team of some sort? Um, what kind of sports team have you been on? Softball. Softball? Uh, what kind of role did you play? Um, well, just like, I we talked about their specific roles with softball. It's like everybody has a different position, but What was it a successful team? Did you guys do well? Was there like goal setting? Was there a clear leader in the uh, on the team? Um, well, our coach didn't really believe in that, so our coach was leader. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, it was just specifically defined our goal actually was to play every game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think sports is a very good example of how we identify teams as opposed to. Let's take us five, for instance, and if we go across the street after this project and, and get a burger, um, walking across the street, yeah, let's do that, let's do that. <laughs> walking across the street, uh, we may be identified as a group of five, maybe good looking guys walking across the street, as opposed to maybe a team of guys walking across the street. That's kind of how identity is viewed as a team. Also, time and resources with a team is, very, is used very efficiently and effectively. Um, they get stuff done. Uh, a lot faster and a lot more efficient. Um, so that's basically time and resources. And when we had all this information on, on teams and groups, we kind of thought to ourselves, you know, what makes one team better than the other? Or, or like Kyle, what do you think? Um, you know, what are the values of, of a team that to be successful nowadays? Well, I think the value for a team to be successful is they're very. It's a very. They have to be very close. They can't just be a group of random people thrown together and told to do this. They'll, they may be able to do it, but they won't do it as effectively as they can if they were interacting with each other and getting to know each other. It's they and with the team. Tim, Kyle, with, are you are you saying that like a social factor has a lot to play in it? Oh yes, it does. It has a great part to play because you have to be very social with your group, get to know them, tr and they'll build trust, build a relationship, and you can be able to just be able to depend on them to accomplish their tasks. So it's. It's, and also, it's with the team. It's groups and teams. They both have goals and responsibilities. But with the team, it's you want to more clearly define the goals and set up all the responsibilities. You don't want to just kind of like a group will go in and just kind of see what happens. I have a group in another class where it's, we first met together, and even right now, it's we're having a hard time trying to get exact roles going because no one's really to step up, or it's I I tried to step down to let someone who was more motivated for our task, which we had to do community service, I thought someone had a good idea, and I thought they would be able to 
motivate the team more because they were more passionate about it. But what ended up happening is they were good at coming up with the idea. They were never good enough, good at, good at coming up with a plan and an action to actually accomplish that goal. So who, who's the facilitator in, in all this? Who is actually in charge of creating it's, these things? It's what ended up happening is we came up with the idea, and then I tried to let them take over, but then I ended up stepping back up and setting up the plan. It's, we cooked for 40 people, and we served them yesterday. So I came up with a plan like a menu, um, days to go shopping, how much each member should contribute to the actual price, and also try to get any like family members involved. They want to help and things like that. And just try to plan it out in a structured way so we weren't rushed.